Happy holidays, my dark darlings. I hope spending time with family and friends is going well. I'm still in the middle of the horrors of moving. So when I need a quick break, I whip out my phone and spend some time with best fiends. It's a cute, casual mobile puzzle game. I'm a very casual player, but even I'm like in shouting distance of level 200. I love having it for on the go, like when I'm waiting in line for groceries, there's no internet connection needed. And then plus I really like that it stays fresh because Best Fiends also updates the game monthly. So there's new levels plus events. So engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. The chills and thrills continue on the Something Scary podcast. Hear more for free on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hey, I'm Markia. Want to hear something scary? Misty Mountains of the Dead. Today's tale takes us on a nice quiet retreat in the Pakistani mountains. Who knows what we'll meet in those high altitudes? Maybe a friend or maybe not. Get ready for this next harrowing story, inspired by a submission from Hisham. Late one spring, Mahira and her father Imran decided to take a trip to the Saliman Mountains during the holiday break. They had never been before, but had gotten a good deal on an old cabin that offered rest and seclusion from their busy city lives. After the long drive, Mahira, a budding photographer, set out to explore with her new camera. Wary of the unfamiliar surroundings, her father asked her to be careful and to not go too far. The closest town was a good hike away, and the cabin was very isolated in the wilderness. Promising that she wouldn't be long, Mahira began strolling through the woods, breathing in the fresh air and pausing to take pictures whenever inspiration hit. When she stopped to review a few of the photos, Mahira was startled to see another face looking back at her. There was a boy standing between the trees. She looked around and called out, announcing herself as a friend. Suddenly, he emerged from behind a tree. He seemed close in age to Mahira and was carrying a large backpack and wearing a very tightly wrapped scarf around his nose and mouth. Mahira found that rather curious and asked his name. He whispered that his name was Omar and that he'd gotten lost while on a hike with his parents. It was starting to get dark and Mahira didn't feel comfortable leaving him alone in the woods. So she invited Omar to join her and her father in the cabin for dinner. After dinner, her father suggested that Omar stay the night with them and offered to drive him home in the morning. Omar graciously declined, saying he didn't want to impose. As a parent, Imran reasoned, it would give him peace to ensure Omar got home safely to his parents. Why risk the possibility of getting lost again, Imran said. Wanting to appear grateful, Omar accepted. After a game of checkers, Mahira and her father were tired from their long day. As Imran began to make a bed on the couch for Omar, violent knocking erupted at the front door. Startled, Imran approached the door. Maybe it's your parents, he said to Omar as he swung it open. But there was nobody there. Just a cold, empty mist that began pouring to the room from the outside. Black and gray wisps swiftly surrounded them and a chorus of wails echoed somewhere in the distance. Imran felt the mist feather across his face as if seeking an entrance. Omar suddenly shouted, cover your mouths, it's the mists of the dead, they're real. He covered his nose and mouth with his arm, handing his scarf to Mahira. Quick, cover your face, he demanded. Imran slammed the door shut, turning to Omar and demanding to know what the boy knew of it. I thought it was just a tale, a tale to scare kids away. Families in my village say that within the mists up here are the spirits of the dead children who've died in the woods on top of this mountain, he explained, telling them that actually he'd hiked up here on a dare from friends before he got lost and ran into Mahira. If even half of what they whispered about those mists were true, they had to keep away from them, Omar warned. Legend had it that at the base of nearby Mount Chilton, a poor couple had abandoned their hungry children to fend for themselves. 
and now the wailing and crying of the children could be heard whenever the mist appeared. Slowly, Imran nodded, saying he thought it was best to lock all the doors and windows and wait out the night. They quickly closed up the cabin as best they could. They would all sleep in the living room tonight and leave once the sun rose. Mahira sorted through the pictures she had taken the day before. She couldn't sleep thinking about the mist waiting outside. Just as she began to nod back off, she heard soft footsteps on the floor. She turned her head in time to see the mist had entered a crevice in the room, and with it, an ashen, blank-eyed Omar. He was holding a large piece of firewood poised over the head of her sleeping father. Mahirda flung her camera at Omar, knocking him back. The camera flashed, and black vapor, like the fog from earlier, lifted away from Omar's face. But just as she breathed a sigh of relief, it quickly began to gather upon his face again. Grabbing her camera, she triggered the flash again and again. Through a blur of intense light strobes, she watched the vapor evaporating from Omar's body. Gasping for air, Omar apologized, crying that he had been taken over by the spirits. Awakened by all the commotion, Imran handed each of them a blanket and demanded they wrap them around their noses and mouths. We're leaving right now. Stay close to me. With their faces covered, they followed Imran outside. They huddled together, pushing through the thick vapor of the dead as it swirled like tentacles around them. Mahira angled her camera as they ran, each snap of her flash acting like a shield against the dark mist creeping ever closer. Emron jumped into the car, starting the engine as Omar and Mahira jumped into the back seat, locking the doors. Emron turned on the brights and slammed on the gas. The headlights burned through the grasping mist as they sped down the mountain. Behind them, the sun rose, thinning the mists which retreated away back into the dark crevices of Salaman Mountains. Thank you to all of our patrons. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com slash snarled. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, my dark darlings, sweet dreams.